I'm Chef Plum, and I've made my entire career off serving fantastic local food. Nothing better than showing your family local pride than using local food from farmers. Look at this. Business is booming, that's Whoa, for sure. Business is booming. Supporting local farmers and artisans is one of the most important things we can do in any state. If we don't support these guys, we're going to lose them. And not to mention, they make great products. Join me as I show you some of my favorite places right here in the Nutmeg State. Got a place that you love? Want to show off some hometown pride? Find us on social media and let us know. Edible Nutmeg on the road. I'm Chef Plum, and I've got my buddy, the CT Chef's Challenge Champion, Chef Adam Bedini from CT Streetery, hanging out with me today. Tell them where we are. We're at Mohawk Bison in Goshen, Connecticut. Mohawk Bison in Goshen, Connecticut. It's a bison farm in Connecticut. I had no idea. I can't wait to taste some of their products, to see how many different ways are, just how do you do a bison? It's blowing my mind. We're gonna take edible nutmeg on the road to Mohawk Bison in Goshen, Connecticut. Mohawk Bison. Established by owner Peter Fay in 2007 on his family's former dairy farm, is settled on the outskirts of Goshen, Connecticut, located in the scenic hills of Litchfield County. Preserving his ancestors' dedication to quality and sustainability, Peter strives to farm in a manner that provides balance between animals and the land, enjoying the open fields of their 60-acre farm. They are never subjected to questionable drugs, chemicals, or hormones. How many do we have on, on the property right now? Across the street in here, there's probably 60. This animal, you said, for instance, that one's 2,300 pounds. What would be the yield on something like that? He'd probably dress about 1,400, so you'd probably get about 900 pounds of meat. Wow. Off of him. Wow, that's insane. Do you use the bones for anything? Do they get to go yeah, to the place? Yeah, all the marrow or? bones get used. All the organs get used. The Native Americans usually take the hides and the heads, so not too much goes to waste. Yeah, this is how we get them in a trailer, or we give them shots and weigh them. Um, do blood, we draw blood for pregnancy on the cows. And it's pretty strong. We get, once we get them in here, they can't get out. Uh, they calm down a little bit, and we start running them through different pens. And there's smaller pens in this area, and we walk, work off of catwalks. And we get them through this into the chute, and we can stop them in there, squeeze them, and uh, you say we weigh them, give them shots. Um, and then they can go straight into a trailer when we take them somewhere or they go back in and go back out to the pasture. So by the time you've had them through here, getting them in the trailer is probably pretty easy because they want to get the hell out. Yeah, once you open that chute, they'll go straight into the trailer. Wow. Yeah. And so when you put them in here, the things you do, you check for pregnancy, yep. uh, you, you'll deworm them, but you don't use any kind of like hormones, nothing else. No, 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 no. We just, we deworm them and then um, pretty much that's it. Draw blood to test pregnancy and then, yeah. Uh, yeah. And just weigh them so we keep track of their health. Now what age will you start bringing them in here to start doing this? Right As calves, the young calves down there at two months old will come in and get ear tags, mm -hmm. um, the same number as their mom, so I know where they came from, the date of birth goes on the back of the tag, and then they go back out again. The demand is just huge. It's huge. Those, you can't I, I could sell twice as much as I do if I could raise enough animals. But bison is tricky. You have to understand what you're cooking when you cook bison. You can't just grill it like a regular burger. You can't just throw it in a hot pan to sear it like a regular piece of meat. Right, can't we? right. That's the biggest thing with people is educating them on how to cook it. And you being a chef, you would understand that. Let's take a walk outside, see if we can't help teach them how to do sure. that. Sure. Want to? That works. Let's do it. I can't stand having anything more than protein and meat for dinners. And I thought a really cool dish, especially being out here on the farm, we could do would be one of my favorites where we're actually gonna make an awesome bison and grilled vegetable salad. Couldn't be any easier. I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, when I do a marinade for things, it's really, really easy. We got a nice bowl of chopped vegetables here. We've got some awesome spring onions cut up in here, some peppers, some squash, some mushrooms, and I even throw a few tomatoes in there. I think tomatoes help make this off. Adam, take the little small silver container there of garlic, right, pop that in there. Get it all in there. There you go. Guys, give me a pinch of salt. And now I'm gonna have 
Peter, do me a favor here, all right? Peter, you got this. See that bottle of olive oil? <laughs> Give me about a tablespoon or so put in there, right? Just kind of pour it right in there. There you go. Okay, so now we're gonna take this, we're gonna toss this up, right? Toss up those vegetables. Grilled vegetables are one of the best things you can have in the summertime. It's so easy to do and quite the crowd pleaser too. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of this balsamic vinegar and pour it right in there. All right, I'm gonna toss this because you got a white shirt on. All right, here we go. Toss these guys up. And all we're gonna do is put them on the grill. But I wanna show everybody something really important here. It's also important when making bison. We're gonna use indirect heat. If you check out the grill, we have coals on one side and not so hot on the other side. It helps us kind of control the heat a little bit better. So we're hot here, not quite as hot here. It's very important with cooking bison. So we'll just pop some of these vegetables down here on the grill and grill them off. There we go. The tomatoes, of course, right on top of the grill there. Our marinated vegetables. And then we're also gonna take a half a lemon and pop it right on the grill too. Now, in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some garlic on there, rosemary, salt, and a little bit of olive oil. So a little fresh rosemary. Really important to use fresh herbs on this. Fresh herbs add so much more flavor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these steaks and we're gonna put them on the indirect side of heat. Now, the reason why, Peter, maybe you should tell him, why should we cook bison not on super high heat? Well, because there's very little fat in it, so it cooks a lot quicker, so low heat and slower is better. Low and slow is the way to go when cooking bison. And I didn't even mean to make that rhyme, that was awesome. <laughs> Here we go. So we've got the indirect side and the hot side. Remember, coals are on one side, not so many coals on the other side. We're gonna pop the steaks. We're gonna put these guys on here and let them roll. We'll check them in about 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll slice them up, it'll be awesome. We're gonna pull these guys off, look at this. Oh my gosh. Set them on our cutting board. Yeah. This looks unbelievable. Letting the meat rest is one of the most important things you can do because what happens is all that juice gets back through the meat. So it's nice, juicy, and just so tasty and we don't want to ruin this beautiful bison, that's for sure. While this rests, I'm gonna have Bedini take our vegetables that we grilled right here, you can see. Awesome, we've got some tomatoes, we've got those onions, we've got those uh, mushrooms, and you just chop them up on the board, a rough chop, as we're slicing this up. Peter, tell me, what's the difference? Bison and buffalo, it gets confusing sometimes, doesn't it? Yes, uh, buffalo are in Asia and Africa, and this is uh, Plains bison from North America. So Plains bison from North America, so bison's from America, is that right? And, and buffalo is from Africa. Africa and Asia, water buffalo and cake buffalo. Gotcha, nice. Oh yeah, look at that, look how, you can see it's so sunny out here, look how it's blushing there, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. We're gonna finish this off right now, from our grilled lemon right on top of there, right? And then we hit it with a little bit more rosemary, Adam's gonna, uh, Adam's gonna pepper us up, and I gotta let my man Peter finish it up with a pinch of salt. Get in there, sprinkle it all around. Awesome. Gentlemen, family style dining, on a bison farm right here in Connecticut. I had no idea. Trust me, I'm not leaving. I'm here forever now. This dish, I can't wait to dig in. These guys, they haven't even looked up for one second yet. Have you noticed that they're staring at it? Easy to do. Check it out. See what you think. Guys, come on here and get some. Until next time, we'll catch you down the road with Edible Nutmeg on the road. Let's get in there. They have their beer all over the place, and trust me, once you meet them and you hang out with them, you're gonna like their beer a million times more. Let's go drink some beers, come on. We got our swag being made right now, it's our summer seasonal. We're gonna jump in there and take a look. Basically going through the heat exchanger, cooling down so we can add our yeast.
I was able to kind of experiment a lot while I was at Portsmouth Brewery. I mean, I was there for nine years. I was making 90 different styles a year. Food and beer pairings, that got the chefs on my good side, so I was able to like dig through like their herbs, dig through their spices, find some fun stuff. I mean, my passion is making beer. I want to make beer better than the day before I made beer. Tweak the recipes, make the beer as best as it possibly can. We have a uh, 15 barrel brew house. A barrel is 31 gallons, so if you do that math real quick, we're like 495, 500, right around that, kind of for one batch. Wow. So this is beer before it's beer. It's uh, called wort. So what should we expect when tasting this wort right now? So this will wort... We will we taste some of that, that uh, grapefruit yeah. and stuff in Oh, there? you're going to definitely taste the grapefruit peel. You're definitely going to taste the sage because this is the swag. It's going to be sweet, though. Okay. It's going to taste like a hot tea. Dude, that's amazing how much it actually really does taste like a hoppy tea. So this is a, a the, the name of the beer is the Brett Golden Sour. So Brett it's a, Golden Sour, So gotcha. a golden beer, and then it's a Brett C or Brett Costly Anise. Uh, is the Brett strain that we use to ferment it out. So gotcha. that's, that's the yeast strain, It's a yeast strain, right. yes. So yes, the we all of our disco pigs are wa wax dipped. Easiest way to open that, give yourself a knife. You run it all the way around to make sure that your, your, your bottle cap is free. And then you give yourself a little notch. It's kind of like opening a wine bottle. Yep, and then you give your custom oh. Black Hog pigtail bottle opener, Back available now. here at the Black Hog Back Brewery. Now. Get your free bottle opener. That's S awesome, look at that. Sneak it right underneath the top there, and the whole cap cramps right off, very simply. Wow. So the key is, once you start pouring, you don't want to stop. So you get your glasses lined up, you get your first glass poured, then you bring the glass to the beer, and oh, keep on pouring. And then you stop because that last little bit is actually called the lees. It's yeah, like the, the end of the, it's all the yeast that has settled out in the bottom. And uh, we don't want to drink that. The truth is you're adding the flavor of the cytoplasm of the dead yeast cells, which tastes gross. Only in a brewery <laughs> can you learn words like cytoplasm. That's right. Dana, get in there. Have a sip. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. Mm. That is a tasty beer. Now listen, welcome to Connecticut, your show. Mm -hmm. You uh, just had your 100th episode, man. It's going fantastic, dude. Tell us about the show, how's it going? Casual conversation with people in Connecticut. That's what we do. 100 episodes in, I didn't think we'd get to 100 episodes yeah. in. We got to 100 episodes in and I had you on the show I for know. 100 episodes. I guess the, the guest pool was really low. I, you know, really, you know, <laughs> really low, really accessible. I'm trying to think of people who would come to my home office. <laughs> But, you know, it, it was a good time, and I'm enjoying myself doing it, and I get to meet really cool people. I get to meet people like you, and yeah. I get to meet people like the guys at Black Hog, because they're awesome, and, you know, everything everything you touch just turns into gold. So we got to go in here and make these guys, like, realize the Chef Plum touch. It's like the Midas touch. Dude, we're going to see what we can do, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, yeah. Check out Welcome to Connecticut. You can find it on iTunes. Ken's a great host. A fantastic show. Right now, let's go drink some beers. Come on. Absolutely. Ginger Ninja is an incredible beer to cook with. I got a great clam dish. We're gonna make it right here inside the brewery and we're all gonna to go to town eating it. Sound good? Absolutely. All right, check it out. So Kenny, first thing we got here, is just bread. We grilled it off on a grill pan, right? And Ken's gonna hold this. And here's the cool thing. Take one of these garlics right here. This, this, right. this clove of garlic. Ones? Yep. Good. All right. And just rub it on the bread. Garlic is so cool. If you rub garlic on the bottom of your foot, in an hour you'll taste it in your mouth. Pour a little olive oil over top of all the breads, okay? Wonderful. Eric rendered down some bacon for us, right? You can see the bacon right here. But we're not gonna lose the fat. That fat is still right there in the pan. See that? Oh, yeah. oh it smells fantastic. A little shallot, a little garlic, and some ginger there too. Put that ginger right in there. And now here's the thing with this. We don't wanna saute it to death in this pan, right? All we want is for this bacon fat to take on the flavors of that garlic, that ginger. These are beautiful fresh clams right down from Greenwich area. They're awesome, they're unbelievable. Again, back to local stuff. We have the most amazing seafood here. I don't think we get enough credit for it. Oh, definitely. Year round. Yeah. Pop those guys right in that pan. There you go. Looks good. Kenny, I want you to take that beer and just pour it right into those clams. So this is gonna pour into here. We're gonna let this kind of all come together. These flavors kind of all become best friends. You got the garlic, you got the fresh ginger, you got those fresh shallots in there. It's gonna take about four and a half minutes. So uh, let's have a beer while we wait for the clams to open. Here it is. Cheers. These clams have opened up. Look how you can smell it, right? It smells oh. unbelievable. Yeah, it smells amazing. Local clams are one of those things that are incredibly sustainable. They clean the water. It doesn't take really anything to make them grow or make them happen. It's such an important thing, especially here in our state with how much different seafood we have. I don't want to overcook these guys. You can kind of see how it's still got that little tenderness to it. Overcooked clams are absolutely not fun to eat. Tyler's going to take this butter 
And remember guys, in here is that fresh garlic, that fresh ginger, all those delicious flavors are happening in here. And he's gonna mix this butter in here and what he's doing is actually a French technique called Monte au beurre. Right, we're speaking French in the brewery, how about oh, that? Oui, oui. It means to mount with butter. We're gonna take these toasts and just kind of place them in there, place them around. You can do it, brother. Just, just kind of take some and just kind of stick them in there wherever you can. Kenny, what do you think I smell? I think it's amazing. Way better than anything I could ever make. I think you got it, man. And listen, Ken talks about all these great recipes on Welcome to Connecticut. You can check out the podcast. Amazing breweries like Black Hog. Black Hog's an and amazing And amazing brewery. chefs like you and a whole bunch of other people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Make sure you check it out. Welcome to Connecticut. It's an amazing show. You can find it on iTunes. Absolutely unbelievable. We're going to finish this off by taking this awesome liquid here. There we go. We're just going to pour that right in there. Look at that. That butter, those ginger slices, that garlic. Unbelievable flavors happening there. And then Tyler is going to finish that off with a little bit of fresh parsley and a little bit of fresh tarragon. Right on top. Nice. Looks beautiful. Take some of that, that bacon, just pour it right on top there. Unbelievable. Wow, there you go. Bacon in there. like bacon. Go all out, Tyler. There you go. Look at that. Get a shot in there just like that. And before we take it over, let the hounds of hell eat it. Here, get in there and take a little bite of that. It's delicious. Money. With so many incredible breweries popping up all over the state, Black Hog Brewing Company has become one of my favorites. We've had an amazing time here today making an awesome dish. Ken, did you have fun? I had a blast. There's nothing better than coming out and drinking beers and making food, right? This is the best way for me to spend a weekday. Drinking <laughs> beer, making food, why wouldn't I want to do Hey, that? I hope you learned something you can teach your wife. I did, now I know how to make garlic bread. There you go, making garlic bread, drinking great beer. Make sure you check them out, Black Hog Brewing Company right in Oxford. They're amazing, good dudes, and they've got great beer. And hey, come by when I'm here, we'll make some awesome food. Thanks for checking out Edible Nutmeg on the Road. We'll see you guys down the road. Oh, oh, getting overtaken. Away. Overtaken. Supporting local farmers and artisans is one of the most important things we can do in any state. If we don't support these guys, we're going to lose them. And not to mention, they make great products. Join me next time as we take edible nutmeg on the road. I'll see you guys down the road.